Welcome to the Rise of Dagon development update for uh, March 28th. So I wanted to follow up and show off my new um, Serpent of Dagon model that you see in front of you. He is a uh, serpent kind of uh, bad guy and um, I shared some tutorials last week with um, Reddit on how I modeled him and such. So um, he was a pretty nice successful model. He just disappeared because he's dead and I don't have a death animation in yet. Um, I also wanted to do a quick uh, painting tutorial, so I'm going to go ahead and swap over to Mudbox and show off how I um, painted him. So we'll see you over there in a second. So here we are in Mudbox, and uh, this is the current paint job. So this was based off of uh, a, a real life reference. Of course, I mean, he's a fancy creature, so we can't expect him to... Um, you know, look uh, perfectly real, but we can refer to, uh, you know, animals, um, insects, humans to see um, some things that might um, inform us to what a creature like this might look like. So, uh, the first thing we're going to do is go over and uh, go to Google, and um, I'm going to show you the copper really snake that I use as reference first. We're not going to repaint it just like this. This just gives you an example. Um, I, I did some searches and eventually I found, you know, like if we look at this guy here, he looks pretty cool. That um, these kind of colors were interesting to me. I didn't go with them 100%. Any any one of these images, like here, see, he, he looks a little darker, reddish orange, and that, that's kind of what I went with. Um, but his, his back is a, a very dark or black for the most part. So if I come over here, you see. Um, I did tint my back with some red when I made this initially. So um, if you chose to uh, paint this guy differently, let's just search for a different kind of snake. So um, let's first just, just do a snake. And we've got some a green and yellow that looks really nice. Uh, one of my criteria when I'm doing this is that, you know, I'm a soul dev. I, I do all this by myself. So what I don't want to do is make something that's so complex that uh, it's going to take me forever to do by myself so I have to pick something that um, that I think is going to be doable so this purple guy is like really cool looking uh, so these banded guys would be more work I'm not saying it's not a doable amount of work but it, it's more work and then when you get this guy here see the very distinct kind of let's open it in a new tab Zoom in a little bit. Uh, that didn't work out. Open image in new tab might be better. Here we go. So yeah, so these individual colored scales um, would be a lot more work. I have physically modeled the scales and I'm relying on their specularity and normal map to make them show up so that I don't have to paint them uh, in the diffuse layer. So. Uh, I like some of these green ones. I already have a black and red guy. I don't know if I'm going to use this in the game. But um, uh, here, green and white. That's not even real. Green and black. He's cool. So let's open that image in a new tab. Let's go for something a little bit like this. And so we'll notice here that um, he actually has yellow tones in the green. Um, he's got black and there are scales that have both green and black in them so as much as you know it might make sense if we're like a little kid coloring within the lines we go oh no 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 don't ever go outside the lines but in nature that's not always the case so don't get too hung up or uptight about those kind of things what you want is your model to look nice for the amount of effort that you can spare so here we are in mud box um, up at the top, in case you can't see it, there's the sculpt and paint tabs that I'm showing up here. Um, in the bottom, I'm going to go down to the uh, paintbrush. And what I'm going to do is turn off the uh, painting layers that I already have. And then I'm going to come in here and right click on the diffuse layer. And <laughs> we need to add a new uh, texture. So I guess that's not going to work. Uh, let's see. I think we can create a new texture map here. And I apologize, my 
allergies are acting up. So if I sniff a little bit, uh, my bad. All right, I guess that's not going to work out. So let's go back here and see, can I uh, duplicate? Yeah, let's just go ahead and duplicate the selected. There we go. And make sure our opacity is at 100%. Good. So just so we're doing an honest uh, paint over here, I'm going to go ahead and um, get down to the paintbrush tools, turn off my current stamp image. We're going for kind of a green guy. I like to start with darker colors. Uh, let's make sure the size of our brush is fairly big. I'm holding down the B key and then dragging with my cursor. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put the strength up all the way. And let's just get him a nice flat green to start with. Now, when you're painting, sometimes the uh, material that you've assigned to the object can actually make a little bit of a difference about how the painting looks. So let me turn off my paint for here for a moment, come down to the material presets. And um, some of these uh, are better or worse. This gesso one, if you've ever done any art classes or painting, gesso is a primer that's used for canvases. Um, you know, traditional oil paintings and even airbrush and illustrators use it. So the gesso is primed to pick up paint really well. And so I, I find that works pretty well for me. If you like a different one, that's cool. But like if you put one like this kind of peach colored one that has kind of flesh tones built into it, when you paint your diffuse layer on top of it, this material property is not going to necessarily come out uh, when you export the map. Uh, so, again, I, I really like to use this one as my kind of primer. So let's go ahead and turn this back on. And then let's look at our reference again so that we don't get too far ahead of ourselves. Uh, we're going to need some fairly lighter greens and some blacks. And so interesting, there's this kind of a marbled and then some there's bigger streaks in areas. And unfortunately, we didn't get a super great image of his... Um, uh, his body here, maybe some of these other images would show a similar snake. I'm not sure. No, different snake. And that's the problem. Unless I knew, you know, if you knew what the name of that kind of snake was, then we could Google that particular snake and find more examples. We're just going to swing with it because it's more about learning the process than it is uh, nailing that particular rendition. I'm going to size my brush down a little bit. And then uh, here we're going to pick a brighter green. And now I'm going to bring my opacity down a bit. And we could go with a stamp image. I'm not actually going to do that quite yet. Um, it's, you really got to play with the strength a lot of times. And you may or may not want mirroring on. Right now I think I do. So what I want to do is make sure that his chest pieces and his... Uh, underbelly definitely just start off lighter because that's often the case with a lot of snakes and remember we're not trying to be ultra perfect here because nature's not perfect nature has a lot of natural variants one of the cool things about painting like this is uh, it avoids some of the pitfalls and traps that you might run into if you were painting in Photoshop and strictly a, the two-dimensional UV layout. So if you go over here, this is the two-dimensional view that you'd be doing in Photoshop. And when you're trying to cross over a scene like we have here, trying to get this to match up exactly with the bit under here on his belly might actually be really hard, right? But in here, no effort at all. Um, so this is like a really, really super cool option, especially if you're not uh, either really good with Photoshop, maybe you don't have Photoshop, or maybe you do have Photoshop and you're just not the artist type. Um, you don't have to be a super great artist uh, and have all those Photoshop skills uh, to be able to do this. So the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to put a little bit of light stuff around the edges um, because a lot of times you know this guy is a humanoid anthropomorphic kind of a uh, fake snake guy and nothing like this exists in nature so I'm going to assume that he evolved a little bit and that his underbelly uh, toning would have 
kind of stayed because there's no evolutionary purpose once it becomes anthropomorphic for those color tones to change. So Vic, even though his scaling here is evolved to, you know, uh, kind of a carapace armor, uh, I'm going to make it light like his underbelly would have been. And I'm also going to go ahead and paint the palms of his hands off the, you know, um, at least with humans, uh, they will have, if they have darker melanin uh, in around the body, there'll be lighter amounts of melanin under the hands. Um, and then sometimes there'll be more melanin uh, in other areas, sometimes like uh, uh, body creases, uh, arms, legs, knees, uh, and where skin kind of builds up, those will be tones of more melanin. Uh, I don't know, you know, <laughs> he's a fake snake guy, right? Does he have melanin? I don't know. But if we use, he's anthropomorphic, so it can be whatever you want. There's, there's no reason to say yes or no to any of that. So now I'm going to go start uh, pulling towards the yellow tones. So see, I'm slating the bar over here. And this is a very yellowish green, but I want to pump up the yellow. And then now I'm going to go ahead and use the stamp. So uh, don't be afraid to experiment and then do the undo. But here I do want my mirroring off because I want this to be more natural and not look like um, too mirrored because that will look a little false to the eye. And if you want, see this randomize area, you can randomize the rotation, the scale vertically and horizontally, and the uniform scale, um, as well as, uh, I forget what that little black and white one is. And then another cool thing you can do is the stamp spacing, which is, you know, if it's um, being dragged down, so I get my stamp here, then here, then here. So play with that. So I'm just going to show you how this might look. And you see it's got this kind of cool mottled look. Now I'm going to undo, do, 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 undo. And let's go back over to stamps. You can use all sorts of different stamps. And that might be good. I'm going to undo it. Uh, let's do this kind of interesting one here. Nothing wrong with that. It's just kind of hard for me anyways to kind of see what's really going on there. Let me bump up the color a bit. Um, I think it doesn't look right to me. I'm going to undo that one. Just a couple more. Now, yeah, that's really interesting. I would argue it doesn't look anything like what I want my snake guy to look like. So just by chance, this one here is the one I had selected before. To my eye, that looks best might not to you, that's okay, or you have a different character with different needs. So I'm going to go down here. Now, a technique a lot of people use is they start building more layers over here, and that's perfectly valid, especially if you're not, um, you know, I won't say a bad artist, but you know, you're just not as comfortable. I anything you put on a layer, uh, it can be instantly recovered. Or, you know, you can take it away by removing the layer and, you know, done. You're back where you started. There's there's no pain. So I would work with layers of Furuyu. Um, from my art classes I took in college, um, my teacher really just encouraged me, I'm sorry, encouraged me to just, like, paint on top of things and work it and work it and work it and not be afraid of a destructive process. And, um, <laughs> you know, at first I was, I was really anal and I was afraid that I would ruin that finely detailed work I had spent hours on. And, um, you know, eventually I, I, I tried it because they're my teacher and I, I trusted them. And um, I ended up liking it. There's something about, and I apologize, everyone saw my brush goes really big for no apparent reason. I don't know why my box is doing that, but I, I have to size it back. It might be because my fingers touch my Wacom. Um, you don't need a Wacom to paint this stuff. But um, it does make it smoother. I, I have painted with a mouse before, and it turns out fine. Um, you can get a really small Wacom for like 99 bucks, like the uh, bamboos. And they work fine. Uh, the bigger ones, they let you know if, especially if you have any formal art training at all. And I'm not saying you have to have a degree, but go take a life drawing at a community college. Uh, They'll teach you a lot about a line quality and stroke, and um, all of a sudden you'll find yourself wishing you had more canvas to work with, and 
There's something about a full stroke instead of a really restrained small stroke that seems to make for better art, uh, in my eye anyways. So, again, I, I don't know what that snake looked like um, on that other part of his body here, but um, I also don't care. This is my creation now, and this is a fantasy game, and he can look like whatever I want. So, um, those tones look pretty slick to me. I like that a lot. I'm not going to overdo his arms because I want specularity to um, kind of do me, you know, more service there. Uh, I do want to work on his head now, so in a little bit more detail than the general kind of broad strokes. Uh, one thing you're seeing here, see the like scratches on his face. Those are actually modeled um, in, in the high detail layer of this. So let's go back and check our reference again. So there's a, a pretty good amount of yellow on his lip area, and then. Um, interesting varieties of tonal variation on this he's got a gray eye which is like really cool um, silvery gray and then a really good black streak here but uh, in general he's a lot lighter tone than what I've been doing again that's okay but um, if, if I want to do some interesting things uh, with realism as my influence I, I could take more information from that way and try to match him up with that. And indeed, as I do that, I find myself liking that. So let's, uh, let's do some more of that. That's awesome. I like it. And see what I'm talking about? If I had to build up layers and more layers and more layers, uh, one, it takes a little bit of memory. Um, if you got a beast of a machine, that's okay. Do it. Um, again, layers are awesome. But it, in a destructive process, if I could, I could undo a little bit, and if not, so what? I get out the darker brush and I go over it again, and then I come back with the lighter brush and redo it. I don't know if you ever noticed, but once you do something a couple of times, you start kind of feeling it out and maybe getting just a little bit better at it. And remember, I said I wasn't going to do this before. But I'm liking those yellow tones so much that I uh, guess what? Uh, now I am going to do it because I like it. And in fact, I like that so much. I'm going to come in here. And that's funny because uh, in a way, I'm painting a little bit of what could look like specularity. But um, I just know for a fact um, I couldn't pick up that much yellow in my specular uh, without it looking like pretty bad so I need to build in some of this and plus uh, this extra yellow is really kind of making it a lighter green which that snake was also in, in some instances you see me following the curves of the model and others not so much and I think painting with the curves is most of the time the right way to go there can be subtle um, things that go on um, with your brush flow and stroke that uh, may not be readily apparent to you, but as a whole, when it comes together, uh, going with uh, the correct flow uh, just looks more right. Okay, I'm going to turn off my stamp. I'm going to go for now. There's so if I go all the way up in the corner, that's black, right? But there is something called a super black, which is a black with a little bit of color mixed in it. And I do mean just a little bit. And I want this to be a super black with a little bit of green sampled in it. Because, uh, you know, I, I feel like with this snake that he would have those green tones mixed in like we saw in his scales. So even in the area where it's black, there would, there would be some deep green inside of it. So again, mirroring is off. And then let me, let me just go check my reference. So it was behind the eye. And, and I'm going to undo that and I'm going to mirror that. You know, there's a fair amount of not mirroring going on already, but uh, in this case, I want to mirror some of what was happening here. Okay. Let me zoom out and look at that. It's not too bad. Um, I'm also not super impressed with it either. <laughs> I think it goes back down the side of his head more. Oh, this brush is too big. We're going to undo. OK, 
Okay. And that, yeah, that's a little more interesting there. So what if I'm just playing right now? And you know, here's where if you weren't so sure of yourself, you make a layer. Um, if you're willing to experiment and do things ever, um, don't do a layer. Um, as I was saying earlier, sometimes doing things more than once, uh, the second time you do it, it looks a lot better uh, because you've learned the topic material and you've, you've already invested a lot of um, artistic um, learning, basically, is, is the best word that I have for it. So what do you think of that? Um, I think it is an interesting promise, but it's not what I'm going for exactly. I'm going to come in here and play with this a little bit more. I might actually just take it out and go with a more green toned guy because he was, was just looking really good. Might not need the black. So, uh, back to the reference again. So, see these little interesting bits. And of course, you have the mirror on. I'm going to undo that and turn off mirroring. And let's save. So that's more of the kind of individualized pattern for him. And uh, I'm going to do the other side in a second here. And. Uh, now, in some cases, I might paint the exact same one, you know, I don't, if you go rewind and check. Uh, but it, by the virtue of not doing it at the same time, it might end up being just a little bit more opaque or a little bit more transparent. On his eye, I'm going to try doing uh, blacking here first. And then when I come back, I'll put the gray over it. Maybe I'll stay with black. It kind of looks pretty cool. And let's try something interesting here. Uh, what if he had a pretty black head? So I'm straying away from you know my nature's thing there. It's pretty interesting looking there, I'd say. All right, let's do this. We'll go back here. Pretty big brush. And my other snake had a black back also. Undo that. Let me do something more like a really distinct um, stripe down his back almost. that a lot. Now what I don't like is the border here is just too bold. So I'm going to use the, um, there's a color sampler here if, if I wanted to come in and grab that I could. So now I'm, yeah look at that. Wicked. Even though it's got a pretty distinct stripe, I'm still going to tone it just a little bit of mixing in here. I just think it'll look, make my brush smaller, make it look more natural. Make that border just seem more organic. And then let's go in and do his eyes. So turn off the stamp again, grab something silverish. It's hard to, to know how uh, light I want that to be or not. I really should have mirroring on right now. Looks pretty good. And uh, yeah, so the black was really cool too, but. If it was black, then the um, 
the pupil and the iris, uh, the bits in there would not be as discernible. Uh, with this I'm going to go with just pure black. Let's see, that's pretty looky. And then um, I'd like to add a bit of noise. Uh, definitely not that strong. Let's lighten that up a lot. In real life, so a lot of times pl when players are looking at him, it's going to be about like this big. So um, his chest looks too boring to me. I don't know about you. So there's lots of things we could do with that. Um, we could dodge it. We could burn it. Uh, we could layer on some different um, colors. We could... Um, use the uh, dry brush tool uh, which kind of applies um, the scraping like effect like the icon shows what I'm going to do is try to push more yellow in spots and I'm going to take like real yellow this time Not too much brush smaller Let's see that's very interesting This might be too yellow, but I can go back over it with um, some other colors. Looks pretty good. I like it. I just don't know that it's getting me all the way where I need it to be. Uh, so this might be where uh, the black would be doing me more favors. Because uh, I kind of like him. You know, when I look back here... I don't know. Mixed feelings. So, let's go ahead and stop there. So we did a pretty quick paint. He's obviously not done yet, but you could make a call right now. Uh, there's nothing wrong with scrapping this and starting over. I didn't time it, but I feel like that was about maybe 15 minutes. Uh, certainly, if I wasn't uh, talking and pausing and explaining it, uh, it could have been faster. Uh, what I might do right now is render uh, the normal map out and then play with them a little bit and, and see how I like it. I, I could certainly, and I guess, uh, let's just try it real quick. Let's just change the tone on his belly. Uh, let's uh, see if we, uh, that's a really tough question. Uh, I'm going to pick a grayish blue and go back to the stamp because you know, I like how it's not oversaturated with color everywhere. Nope, I'm not liking it. But you know what? I'm going to do the destructive thing I was talking about for an undertone here. And that undertone might improve the end look, or it might not. Okay, you could do a save, you could do um, a layer, and those would preserve it for you, or you could just be bold and disastrous and hope it freaking works out. And I'm okay with it. Yeah, look at this. So there's, uh, let me undo that. No, I'm starting to, there's an interesting tonality that the undertone of the blue was doing for me there. See, it looks or it's got a base to it. So yeah, um, there's definitely value in playing with it. And uh, what also maybe could be a v super good benefit here is to go and pick a more full-bodied reference image so that I could be deciding uh, if this guy... That's interesting. There's like a really strong modeled effect on him there. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, look at that when you zoom out. That's really perceptible at the player's kind of resolution level. And that's what's important is that, uh, you know, every once in a while a model like this might get in their face. Yeah, look at that. I like that. That's almost game ready. Yep, undo that. Uh, I could almost.
almost live with it. I would probably play with it more if I was going to put this particular one in game. Let's go ahead and save this. So um, hopefully that was useful. Um, as you can see, it didn't take a lot of Photoshop's kind of skills. Photoshop's um, also a very layered technology. Photoshop's um, though the again back to the UV here. This automatically dealt with all the seams. Of course, because I have a good le UV layout that I'm pretty happy with. I've got space in the upper corner here for some accessories I might add to this model layer. But um, this guy could probably go poke him in the game and see how he looks. And uh, he might become a variant um, for one of my monsters. So I hope that was uh, useful for you, Mudbox. Uh, I don't work for them, but if this is 10 bucks a month. Uh, you can rent it and do it one month at a time. So you could try it out probably on a 30-day trial. And if you like it, rent it for $10. And when you're done, cancel it. But having had done all your work and keep it. I've been renting it for a few months now. And, and I just keep using it more and more. So um, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.